When I made my Lost Puzzle, I had a nine color scheme which I really, really liked, but I couldn't think of a design that would need nine colors, and so I was left scratching my head as to what build I was going to make today. But then I remembered an old design that I've been sitting on for a while that just so happened to have nine faces, one for each color, and that would mean a nine color scheme. And so today I was going to be building a puzzle that can really only be described as a truncated pyramid. I'm sure it has a proper name and I'll title the video accordingly, but for now I tighten the puzzle up so that it wouldn't turn and then I took it over to my bandsaw to begin the first cuts. The cuts I was making on this puzzle were effectively no different to a couple other puzzles I had already made in this series and after I'd finished cutting four corners off, this is what the puzzle looked like. Unfortunately, as I was looking over the puzzle, I realized that I had cut a little too deep, but at least I have spares. So many, many spares. I took the puzzle over to my desk and I got some epoxy sculpt out, but then I realized I didn't have a whole lot. Luckily, I have spares of this too. Unfortunately, I don't have a spare will to live, but that's a story for another time. Because all of the cavities that I had to fill were exposed, I stuffed all the pieces full of epoxy sculpt and after everything had hardened, this is what the puzzle looked like. Now it was time to sand everything down, so I took the puzzle over to my belt sander and I started sanding all of these faces, but I was careful not to sand too far because I still had some extensions. It's important not to sand down to the final dimension if you have some extensions to do because you usually end up losing a millimeter here and there and you don't want to be at the final dimension when you have to sand further. After I'd finished sanding everything, you can really start to see the shape of the puzzle that I'm building. All these areas that are scuffed up are going to get extended, so I took the puzzle over to my desk and I disassembled everything. I built up extensions on all the pieces that needed it, which ended up being just the four edges and the centerpiece. I took all those pieces over to my belt sander and I sanded down the outside parts just so I could reassemble everything. I rounded over all the pieces with a sanding block and a nail file and then I put everything back together. After everything was reassembled, this is what it looked like and you can see that I definitely have some sanding to do, so I took the puzzle over to my belt sander and I started sanding all the faces down. All of the sanding for this puzzle was very similar to my truncated tetrahedron build and I was pretty much using the exact same reference points of the end of the corner piece and the center. What I mean by that is I'm just drawing an imaginary line between a couple points on the puzzle and then I'm trying to sand down to that plane. And after I was finished sanding everything, you can see that I hadn't quite extended the top of the puzzle very well, but I'll get to fixing that off camera. But for now, it was time to round over the edges of all of the pieces and finish this puzzle up. I did my usual sanding method of a nail file and a sanding block, and then I rubbed everything down with some Scotch-Brite. After I reassembled everything, I looked over the puzzle and I started preparing the color scheme. I wasn't sure where the stickers were going to go, but at least I had nine faces, so I could come up with something. As usual, when I sticker up my puzzles, I now disassemble everything so that I can cut the stickers for each of the pieces individually. After I'd finished cutting all the stickers and I had reassembled everything, here it is, the puzzle is finally done. I am so happy with how this puzzle turned out. I really did just build this purely because I wanted to do a nine color scheme and I think that out of it, not only have I achieved my goal, but I've also ended up with an incredibly cool looking puzzle as well. It does lead me to wonder what would happen if I extended out on the areas that I haven't cut down, but that's a thing that I always wonder. God, I'm just never satisfied, am I? Always thinking of how I can improve puzzles that I've already made. It's almost as if I have like a build series where I have to do a video every single day. But anyways, as you can see here, this puzzle does shapeshift and putting it in a checkerboard pattern here, you can see just how far some of the pieces stick out.
I scrambled this puzzle up because I couldn't resist and as you can see it looks incredible and along with the colour scheme I think this is probably my most beautiful puzzle today. <laughs> well I can't think of a better way to end the video than that. Hope you guys like this puzzle, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.